Welcome to the Iron Horse Report. I'm Sergeant Jesse Delker. This week we take a trip to a Baghdad vacation spot and we bring you a moment of valor. First, we take a look at the changing rules of security in Baghdad. Staff Sergeant Kelly Collette explains how U.S. soldiers are training and turning over responsibilities to Iraqi National Police teams. The 2nd Battalion, 4th Brigade, 1st National Police Division Transition Team, Multinational Division Baghdad, make up a very diverse group. They come from all over the United States, but work towards one common goal while in Iraq. Team Chief Major Daniel Isabel tells us more. This team here has uh, it's been a phenomenal team. Uh, it's a very small organization. I think most Americans wouldn't be aware that they exist. We spend a tremendous amount of time outside of the wire. Uh, to date, we've spent uh, over 120 combat patrols outside of the FOB in New Baghdad, participating on various levels in security operations, trying to make this, this operation a, a success. And I think to date, we've made a positive impact on the national police, and uh, we've increased the security in East Baghdad. The NPTT take on a supervisor role with the national police units. Captain Jason Kim, S3 for the 241 team, explains. Uh, we're partnered with 241 National Police Battalion, which is an Iraqi police battalion. Uh, we're responsible for all their training, operations oversight, and employment. Today what we're doing is uh, we're linking up with 166 Armored Battalion, which is our attached higher headquarters battalion, who actually owns the battle space. And we're going out to uh, check out some of the cops and the JSSs, where our national police and our coalition battalion companies operate out of. There are many things the team has to be aware of on a regular basis while patrolling Iraqi streets. They deal with everything from IED attacks to broken axles. While many situations they deal with are business as usual, they also find time to have positive encounters with the local Iraqi children. Soldiers use these experiences to learn more about the Iraqi people they are helping. Specialist Christopher Ehlers, a gunner with the 241 NPTT, talks about his experience. I really believe we're making a difference. And I didn't believe that when I first came here. And now that you meet them, you get to know them. They're not just insurgent patrols, the people. Reporting from Multinational Division Baghdad from Bob Resumaya, I'm Army Staff Sergeant Kelly Collette. Hi, I'm Command Sergeant Major Marvin Hill, Multinational Force Iraq Command Sergeant Major, and you are watching the Iron Horse Report. Soldiers of the 1st Battalion, 2nd Cavalry Regiment, 3rd Brigade Combat Team, 4th Infantry Division, distinguished themselves in the first days of the Shia Special Group's Sadr City Uprising in March 2008. Specialist Mario Johnson's Bradley was hit by an IED, and without regard to his personal welfare, he treated 90% of the casualties while wounded himself, then evacuated all casualties from the burning vehicle. PFC Jesus Rivera responded to an IED strike to his Bradley by pulling casualties from the burning vehicle. He suppressed heavy fire while enabling casualty evacuation and provided first aid during exfiltration. And Sergeant Daniel Guffrey, while performing duties new to him as an RWS gunner, was able to identify an enemy IED emplacer at night and fired upon the enemy, killing him before the IED was in place. The heroic actions of these soldiers helped to win Sadr City and earns them the Bronze Star with V device for battle. A little rest and relaxation is crucial to allow soldiers to recharge during long deployments. Specialist Daniel Turner tells us where they can go to get that R&R. &R. The place is free to rest, and here soldiers get the opportunity to set down their weapons and get some much-deserved rest. I asked 4th Infantry Division's liaison officer for Freedom Rest, Sergeant David Brown, to explain what goes on here. My favorite part of working here is just making sure, you know, soldiers get to relax a little bit, because there's a lot of guys out here that aren't cops. You know, they sleep on a cot every night, they're eating MREs. Coming, you know, coming here, they get a chance to take a shower, or wash clothes, just sleep. It's a big thing. 
Sergeant Brown says the main attraction here is the pool, and they have many activities throughout the week for the soldiers to beat the heat, including the big splash competition. Two jumps off the uh, one meter, two off the five, and then two off the ten. Uh, we also have a water balloon fight on day one, which I usually stay out of. I just want them to get a chance to relax, you know, get away from get away from the troubles of being in Iraq and to just let go for a little bit, unwind. As part of his LNO duty, Sergeant Brown picks soldiers up from the landing zone, drops them off, and even arranges flights when needed. He says every soldier should get the opportunity to come to Freedom Rest for a chance to relax and take their minds off of the everyday stresses of war. Reporting for Multinational Division Baghdad, I'm Specialist Daniel Turner. Baghdad, Iraq. Thanks for watching this week's Iron Horse Report. You can find this edition as well as other episodes by visiting our website at www.hood.army.mil slash 4ID. Reporting for Multinational Division Baghdad, I'm Sergeant Jesse Delker.